Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. We are just returning from where we left off last time. We're on our way to the Divine Tower of Liernia. And to get there, we have to go through the Carrion Study Hall, which is just up ahead. Next to uh, the Valley of the Jars, where we took a pit stop last time to see Jarbaran in Dialos, who's actually doing pretty well. A little bit too foggy to see properly beyond the study hall to the tower itself. That's okay, we'll get there. And if you remember, we also got an item from Ronnie when we gave her the Finger Slayer Blade to progress her quest. Uh, and it was for the Carrion Study Hall. It was the Carrion Inverted Statue. So we'll be figuring out what that's for today. Where are you at? Ah, there's the ghost. Not quite yet, though. O celestial globe, transmit to posterity the wisdom of the moon and stars, and obscure forever the transgressions of the princess. The lunar princess Rani. Who maybe did a little bit of DSI. And this desolate place is the study hall. Desolate save for the fact that it's full of ghosts. Place can't be empty if it's haunted. If it's haunted it, by myriad ghosts. Not to mention Perceptor Miriam. <laughs> Perceptor Miriam and their myriad ghosts. And their merry myriad ghosts. <laughs> Mistimed. Can't do that again. I'll die. Good. Oop. Gonna have to get used to the range and the timing on these. Or on this. Because remember, this is just the one greatsword. This is what happens when you two-hand it. You just get two of them. <laughs> Alright, so Miriam is going to be giving us a headache for a little while. No use really trying to hunt them down yet. Got the Carrion Glintstone staff there. And you'll see why there's no use uh, really worrying about them too much right now. But I think now we are uh, beyond the range at which they can annoy us. I'm sure they'll try. We still have to worry about the phantasms, though. Okay, maybe I lied. Miriam might be able to... Okay. Still a little worried that I may catch a stray up here, but... We do what we have to do. Also keeping an eye out for hungry little rats. Just getting some cozy memories of the research hall in Bloodborne. Very top. Except we don't have dog crows this time around. Yeah, that works. Okay, great. I'm just trying to get out of combat so I can teleport away. So I can take several deep breaths and pretend that that jump didn't scare me to death. Yeah, we may have to go kill uh, Miriam. Just so I can leave. I didn't think this would be an issue. It's never been an issue for me before. Okay. Damn you, Miriam. Stubby on that. 
Okay, they have gone somewhere, I hope. Either way, we're out. We're going right back to the base of the study hall. Because now we're going to place the statue here on its pedestal. Now the fun begins. First off, we're gonna make a jump. Do not presume that the enemies are gonna be the same. First off. Oh, that AoE on Radon Sword is quite strong. That's really gonna come in handy. Seems to be a running theme with uh, the boss weapons. Incredible AoE damage. I bet I could snipe these. That'll make my life a lot easier if I can. Let's see, I'm too far. Hey, there we are. Let's see if I can get this one on the first shot. One. On... Yeah! I've been having a lot of fun sniping with spells this playthrough. Something I don't normally do in Souls games? Like, I, I normally don't freehand spells. And now... We see that they're back. Except now it's going to be way worse. They're more annoying. The enemies surrounding them are... more dangerous. And just the places that you're going, you're going to encounter them. That you're going to be harassed by them. Big problem. Now they move on, they're heavily damaged though, so this is, this is okay. Imagine how much worse that would be if we also had a couple of hands. Crawling around. I saw that. Patient. Oop, early. Too early. Fine. Oh. Take the hit if we need to, but we did not. Lucidity. And nothing else. Yeah, Miriam's one of those types of invaders. <laughs> one of those types of hostile N NPCs. Like Maldrin in the Broom Tower. Running to the bottom of that gauntlet, the spiral staircase down. Now we just have a fun series of very clenchy jumps. Some inclenching jumps. Especially if you have the track record I do with gravity. Yeah, and with all of the harassment gone, we can appreciate how damn cool this place is. And 
unfortunately, it's not really a larger dungeon, or even a mini dungeon, really. Now the bridge to the Divine Tower itself is opened up. Only accessible through the inverted version of the study hall. Just up ahead is another god skin. This one is not the... Oh, I'm waiting for the boss bar to come up. Come on. Come on. Because I always forget the difference between the noble and the apostle. I think this is the noble. No boss bar? I'm... This is just a regular non-boss version of the god skin noble? I really thought this was a false enemy. Odd. No music either. We don't get to enjoy that song. Oh, well, we did just hear it in Altus Plateau, so. We can simply imagine the song. Ugh. And here's phase two. He hasn't started doing the really annoying attack yet, but... By the way, the Noble is way faster and more dangerous than the Apostle. And has crazy AoEs, especially in this form. Ugh. Hasn't done the really annoying one yet. Oh, it's coming. Here it is. Okay. So your best bet when he does this is to get him stuck on geometry for a while. And then he'll tucker himself out. Ow! Really? <laughs> okay, I deserve that. Ooh. Yeah, when he starts doing the empowered thrusts from phase two, that's where he becomes slightly problematic, I find. Also, you just have to dodge forever when he does that roll if you don't get him stuck on something. And it's, I find it to be pretty inconsistent uh, whether or not you make it through. Like, the timing seems to be pretty tight. I'm letting him whoop my ass a little bit. There we go. And he's not going to stop for a bit. Usually if he hits you, he's done. Not today, though. He wants to get Fireball up against the, the balcony. I don't know how I didn't... Oh, iframes on the jump. That must have... Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know how I didn't take that hit. Still, we take those all the time. You saw what that boss was capable of. If he could do some bullshit, I feel entitled to a little bit of bullshit of my own, frankly. <laughs> he caught me off guard with the old no music and no boss health part. It inflicted plus 50% stun on my ass. Couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I guess he is just a non-boss version. 
this is the only one in the game that I know of. I'm probably incredibly wrong about that. I just feel like I... I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> Having a Godskin Noble Mandela effect. <laughs> Berenstein Bears have always appeared on that bridge without a health bar. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can finally make our way up now to the top of this divine tower. One which was locked out to us behind Ronnie's quest. Flesh and blood body of Lunar Princess Ronnie. This is her actual corporeal form, along with the curse mark of death, the half wheel wound of the centipede, as it's been called, and the stargazer heirloom. The young astrologer gazed at the night sky as she walked. She had always chased the stars every step of her journey. Then she met the full moon, and in time, the astrologer became queen. Curse mark carved into the discarded flesh of Ronnie the Witch, also known as the half-wheel wound of the centipede. This curse mark was carved at the moment of death of the first demigod, and should have taken the shape of a circle. However, two demigods perished at the same time, breaking the curse mark into two half wheels. Ronnie was the first of the demigods whose flesh perished, while the Prince of Death perished in soul alone. We got a small preview of that fact when we visited the deeper depths and saw his body? A half corpse? Godwin is in a kind of limbo. His body lives, but his soul is dead. And Ronnie is just the opposite. Oh, there you are. Good of you to drop by. Have you heard? Lady Rani has departed on her journey along the dark path of Empyrean from Rena's rise, as she calls it. It would not have been possible without you. As Lady Rani's war counselor and moreover, her childhood warden, I express my deepest gratitude. You and only you were Lady Rani's true champion. My purpose is nearing its end. I've served Lady Rani for as long as I can remember. It has been a long and wondrous journey. Now Lady Rani is in your hands. I pray that you serve her well and to the very end. Lady Rani, along the dark path. Now, Lady Rani, I pray that you... So now we know that she was killed in flesh that night. What we've been interacting with is Ronnie's soul inhabiting a doll. Another doll, hmm? That's becoming quite a thing. And now, the moment everyone's been waiting for, it's time to get around to box quests. 
The Erd Tree is close, only a little further till the foot of the Erd Tree. And the accord is fulfilled. It takes me back. I was born at the foot of the Erd Tree, where Mother gave me my purpose. Though now, everything is lost to me. I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live. Burned and bodiless. Burned and bodiless. Your seamster, Bok. I see him crying from time to time. I think he misses his mother. He wants someone to tell him he's beautiful. Does being born of a mother mean one behaves in such a manner? Bok the Seamster, at your service, Master. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. Master, may I ask you something? Would you mind if I called you Lord? I heard that you and the other Tarnished seek the throne of the Elden Lord. Well, I know that you will be the one. And you'd make just the manner of kind-hearted Lord that I'd wish for. So please, if you would, allow me to call you Lord. Okay, you don't have to, but you can. You don't say. Thank you. Thank you. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Please become Elden Lord. And please let I, Bok the Seamster, remain at your side. Absolutely. Going already, my Lord. Please do. So I gathered a precious item from the Hermit Shack back on Mount Gelmir. And I got the Golden Needle back at the Church of Vows. It's time. Let's praise Bach. You're beautiful. Bach the seems ready to make a jump. Did I just hear my mum speaking? Thank you very much. Mum was always the only one who said I was beautiful. Oh my god. And now, my dear lord, let me hear her voice. Oh, please, if I may dream just once. Do you feel the same way my mum did, my lord? Do you think I'm beautiful despite these looks? That's right. <laughs> oh, my lord, my dear lord, I, Bok the Seamster, am forever in your service. May the throne of Elden Lord be yours. Going already, my lord. That's so sweet I could Please cry. Do be safe on your journeys. Bok this ready to me. That is so so sweet. I love that you get to do that. That you get to have that interaction. Like this game can be so bleak. This series, the, the this this genre of dark fantasy, you need that you need that buoyancy to counterbalance it you cannot have all bitter and nothing else and there's no there's nothing ulterior to that there's nothing um there, there are no there's no strings attached to that it's just sweet and nice it, it's just a moment where you praise somebody who feels abandoned and alone and ugly and sad and you make them feel good like damn that rules and then you go kick the shit out of an ulcerated tree spirit <laughs> buoyed by your newfound sense of, of hope and camaraderie uh and and spirits lifted by the fact that the world is now just that just little bit better that little bit brighter and you made that happen Oh my! He took us for a ride! I really, really do prefer getting to fight these outdoors. I don't find them particularly obnoxious, but I understand. 
like indoors in particular. Also, look at him go. Speaking of being buoyed by camaraderie, oh wow. Came close a couple times. Our banished night buddy put in the work. Very proud of him. Now, Golden Seed, that's a pretty good prize. That's not what we came here for. More importantly, is the thing on this wrecked caravan. The giant crusher! The big bonker! The biggest bonker! Hammer made from a boulder used in the war against the giants. One of the heftiest weapons in the entire lands between. After the giants were quelled and man turned against man in violence, this weapon was all but forgotten. Man has grown feeble in comparison to his forebears. We will swing it and swing it well. But not just yet. It's still a little baby giant crusher. It can be stronger. It can be better. We have the tools. We have the technology. But first, let's return to Millicent. I can worry about making it stronger off screen. Now, I'm tracing the path Melania took. She's passed into the land. Are you giving me this arm? Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays. I am in your debt yet again. I think if the arm serves well enough, it might be possible for me to wield a sword again. If the arm serves well enough, it might be possible for me to wield... Perhaps then I can aid you in battle. Can't wait. Then we can get a preview of the fighting style of Melania, Blade of Mikola. Ah, oh, we meet yet again. The arm you gave me truly is a thing of wonder. It feels just like my own. Even handling a sword. Perhaps it is foolish to say this to you of all people, but I am sure of my skill with the sword. Thus, I would have you call upon me in battle, should you ever have the need. I would have you call upon me in battle. It is the only way that I can express my thanks. Sounds good. I would have you call upon it is the only Now, next up on the agenda, while we're wrapping up NPC quests, or at least continuing them, we have another one that we can do nearby. Block is just hanging out. Okay, so if we head down here instead of continuing up to that fork in the road where the Great Bridge... Whoa, God, don't die. Thank you. Okay, that was a convenient little shortcut to get down here. Uh, we're heading for the... I'm a little bit nervous about this. I don't know that all these dogs were fixed. There used to be, in some old versions, uh, some dogs that essentially did infinite DPS because of a bug. Seems I am no match for you, but I've learned a thing or two myself. You see, I've sliced the finger off. Please. Please, Eleonora. Yield to the cesspit no longer. Do not stain the immaculacy of your soul. We have arrived too late to save Yura from Eleonora. Not too late to grab his sword, though. And also to avenge him. Whoops. Not the kick. Not the kick. 
Sir, please give me one moment. I'm discombobulated. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can work with that. Oh, you only get one drink? How unfortunate. Yura was avenged. And we even get a purifying crystal tear and Eleanor's pole blade, which is actually quite sick. But what does that purifying crystal tear do? What's that about? Purifies the curse from Moog, Lord of Blood's terrifying rite of blood. What the fuck does Moog have to do with any of this? Oh well, it's a good thing that we happen to come out here and get this. Otherwise, a certain boss mechanic much, 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 much later could be a little bit problematic. Mind you, not uh, insurmountable, but definitely more problematic. This item is unbelievably easy to miss and so useful for one specific boss out of nearly 200 in the game. But anyway, finally, since we've had all of these developments with Millicent, we should also go see if Gowry is doing okay back in Kaelin. being mindful of his pet dog. Don't want any accidents to happen again. Please make certain that little Millicent goes unharmed. Like her mother, she has the stuff to be a great warrior, but commands only one arm and is yet preciously young. So we have some new spells. Not exactly what I'm looking for. We'll get them. Because we need them. Releases life-sapping silver mist before the caster, dealing damage to all uh, caught within. Ah, there it is. Pest Threads. Countless sticky threads, a technique of the pale pests who crawl throughout the lands between afflicted, oh, the lands afflicted by Scarlet Rot, the abandoned children of the goddess. Do you have an interest in rot incantations? Then you might like to learn something of the history of Melania, goddess of Scarlet Rot. Oh? So, you gave Millicent a golden arm replacement. This is a wonderful development. Thank you for your kindness. Now, Millicent may fully realize her true warrior's potential. Like her beautiful mother. The girl, Millicent, she is a bird. Green and undeveloped, waiting to flower into magnificence. What a wondrous day that will be. In truth, before her, I'd never seen a bud of such superior quality. She might very well outshine her sisters. Queen Marika and her King Consort Radigan were blessed with twin demigods, and Melania was one of them. She was born an Empyrean carrying the Scarlet Rod. An Empyrean is no mere demigod. In the age of the Elden Ring and Queen Manica, the precious Empyrean was born, a new god to forge a new order. Since Melania fought Radan, and the great scarlet flower blossomed in Aeonia, I have dedicated myself to her and to the resplendence of the Order of Rot. A cycle of decay and rebirth. 
Alright, we finally got more on what an Empyrean is. Also, have you figured Gowry's deal out yet? Do you need me if for not, something else? There'll be time for that. However, as for next time, we are finally going to enter the royal capital of Landell and start that dungeon. Until then, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone.